Ben's girlfriend's having this party. I don't know if we're going to go or not. It was him and his girlfriend. And they send us the flyer. It's the sex party. And it's just the flyer is just a girl with cum all over her face. <laughs> and we were like, well, I guess we got to go to that. That reminds me of the banana bread that my mom made that had a cinnamon icing on top. How? Oh, got it. I was like, how? <laughs> Interesting. So we had similar New Year's Eve. <laughs> mm -hmm. Keep yeah. going. No, totally. You probably Same looked thing, just like exactly. after you ate it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you guys... Get 40% off your first month for a limited time at ritual.com slash trash Tuesday. This offer is only available through January 31st. Start ritual or add essential for women prenatal to your subscription today. That's ritual.com slash trash Tuesday for 40% off. Give your hair the hard reset it's been asking for with Living Proof. Go to livingproof.com slash Trash Tuesday and use code Trash Tuesday at checkout to get 15% off your order. That's livingproof.com slash Trash Tuesday, code Trash Tuesday for 15% off. Slugs, I am so excited. I have two dates left on my tour. Wait, before that, the trailer to my movie, Drugstore June, is out now. We have limited tickets available for screenings with cast Q&A. It's going to be me, Bobby Lee, a bunch of surprise cast members. You can get tickets to those at drugstorejune.com. That's going to be February 23rd in New York and LA. And then tour dates. Portland, Seattle, my last two shows on this tour before the baby happens. Um, you can get tickets at estheronice.com. I'll be in Portland on January 18th, and I will be in Seattle on January 26th. I can't wait. Estheronice.com. Hi, sluggies. I have so many amazing shows coming up. I'm doing a special one night only show with one of my best friends in the whole world, Bonnie McFarlane, in New York City, one night only, this uh, Sunday, the 21st. It's going to be incredible. We have Tim Dillon, Mark Norman, Lev Fur. You don't know him, but the other two are funny. Um, it's going to be so fun. So get your tickets before it sells out because it's going to go. Then I have my next Annie Wood and Friends at the Comedy Store, January 24th. I'm going to be in Denver, Colorado, February 16th and 17th. I have another Annie Wood and Friends, February 20th. I'm going to be in Vancouver, BC, February 21st through 22nd. And then March is a crazy month. I'm so excited. I'm going to be in Fort Worth, Texas, March 1st and 2nd. And then I'm coming back to New Mexico, you guys. I have not been back to New Mexico to perform since I left. I'm going to be in Albuquerque um, the 8th and 9th. So please come to that of March. It's going to be absolutely wild. I can't wait. I'm ecstatic about that. And then I will be finishing off the month in Washington, D.C. at the D.C. Comedy Loft, March 22nd and 23rd. And my Jacksonville, Florida shows have been rescheduled for the end of June. So go to AnnieLetterman.com slash shows. I'm always adding them. I can't wait to see you guys. Um, I'm so excited about my set and I can't wait. Welcome back to a brand fresh, freshy fresh new episode of Trash Tuesday. Today, sitting in for Kalila, we have a guest we've been wanting for so long. I am addicted to her. She's so funny. She writes for SNL. She writes for SNL. Um, please welcome Rosebud Baker. Thanks, guys. She's also Thanks. I this goes without saying, but one of our stand-up comedy sisters. Yeah. Yeah. And she has a big tour coming up and she just was on Netflix Verified, which was so good. And like, that was huge. That was a huge moment these past few months. It was fun. I, it was really, I mean, well, I say it was fun. I was like eight and a half months pregnant. So it was I miserable. barely remember it. <laughs> but, um, but I am proud that I did it. You know what I mean? Yeah. It's like nice to like, Get look back done. and be like, oh, that's cool. Like, I can show this to her and, you know. Also, the her? best. They She's were, talking about her baby. How are they? <laughs> they're 20 minutes. I'll show it to her and she'll be like, mom, this is f***ing, you're a loser. But, is there um, anything better to do like a, like a special that's like shorts or just like a preview to come see you? So you're not like, oh, here's everything I've ever uh, written. And then I have to write a whole new. I, that's eight minute special. I'm yes, doing it. It's one perfect. Day. <laughs> it's perfect. Yeah. And nobody watches more than that anyway. Yeah. No one needs an hour. I know. I had just shot an hour too but I, I had shot an hour and then they were like uh can you do this eight minutes and I literally wrote like jokes and then just did it so you did for, all different yeah oh my god yeah. that's brave yeah well it was like not brave because <laughs> at the moment I was just like this could be a failure and I don't care but it's not yeah. it's such a funny set like people need to watch it on Netflix oh, Netflix thanks. verified and there's also a bunch of other funny people on there too. Yeah, it's awesome. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. it's a good group. group Robbie Hoffman's is f***ing hilarious. Robbie Hoffman cracks me Robbie the fuck up. Robbie is so funny. God. 
She's so funny. Crazy. She's it's so such funny. a good show. Okay, so now welcome. Esther, has, we have to come out with Esther being fake pregnant. Oh. Um, <laughs> Esther has gotten less pregnant Esther. since I saw her. Faking her pregnancy. This is my worst fear because you know when you have a stomach ache and your dad's like, yeah, right, get up. Like, this is how I feel. What's happening? I yeah. imagine you are just, this is just a stomach ache. It's just a very important <laughs> just stomach a long ache. stomach it's ache. It's a really serious stomach <laughs> ache. <laughs> I was telling the girls earlier, um, I started chewing this flavorless gum that I found from Turkey. And then this guy DM me and was like, that's what incels use to like get their jaw chiseled. I'm sorry, but wait, why? What incels have chiseled jaws? Right? That's but they what want I'm curious them. about. Like, It's like the Huberman bros. I just picture like the guys out there they want a better job because that's how they, they it's easier they to bust that way. Because <laughs> it's easier to one, Wait, we had a win against the what? incels. Did you, have you guys Wait. seen Chet Hanks' last post? Look at this, look at this. Can you put I this down or do God. we have to put it Message to fake alpha bitch ass now. It's literally, he's our king. Clip. Talking about. The turn signal. Being a high value man or, you know, girls, women's body counts. And, they gotta be virgins, <laughs> like how you know. If you make over fucking a hundred k, like if you're six foot three and dudes complaining, bro, I'm gonna lose my fucking mind. <laughs> you nerds, stop <laughs> complaining. <laughs> Jesus Christ! Oh my God! It's clear Man. that you motherfuckers. Will you? Have is he still driving? Done. Danny, will you interpret this for me? Like, what's the gist of this message? He said. Like, I'm sick of hearing all these alpha guys on podcasts, like talking about how like high, they're high value men and high value women need to have be like virginal and have never had sex. And he's like, "You guys are nerds. You've never been laid. You've never gotten like this is so embarrassing. Okay. Shut the f up." Because I've just been like, that "What rules. is this shit?" By the way, also even if you look at like an Andrew Tate, it's like. Guys, he has like prostitutes around him who have banged a hundred guys and he's paying them and you're like listening to his rhetoric. He's just like playing all these incels. Wow, that is, I'm really proud. I of didn't know Chet Hanks was going to be my king and he's my king. <laughs> he is my king. And Can I tell you same, something? I knew, he was gonna, I knew he was going to be your king. Yeah, know, <laughs> <laughs> it's like Kevin Federlein fell. So he's who your else type. is going to be there for He's me? your type, yeah. <gasps> yeah, he I is. feel like he uh, stopped driving halfway through that. <laughs> He was he was doing a lot of hand talking. Maybe he's a Tesla. I was just concerned. I'm like, I still see the background moving. I know your foot is on the accelerator, but where's the steering wheel? I once there's a female comedian who was um when um what was the the app everyone was using that went out of business that was like a live streaming. We used to do Periscope. Periscope. Oh, I just how could remember. you forget the only I just app remember. I My ever brain Periscope. On. <laughs> Periscope. She was periscoping and she got in a car accident on the periscope and it's so funny. Did you know that TikTok <laughs> will not allow you to live stream while you're in a car? It'll shut down your live stream. Wow. So I have Man, no China career. China knows f***ing everything. China. They know. Like, they know when you're driving. We support the state of China, whatever you are. We actually <laughs> love China so whatever much. Whatever you are. <laughs> whatever you want to be today, we, we will sponsor you actually. Um, I did not know that TikTok wouldn't let you live stream but yeah. i've also never once ever tried to live stream on oh TikTok. so you're well adjusted <laughs> and you're let's not say things we can't take back um, <laughs> but yeah no i've never tried it wait so okay obviously i'm going crazy over here because you just had a baby uh-huh and like you seem like you're fine yeah I so am. that's really great news. It's, it's a shock to me too <laughs> i was pretty sure i was gonna be like depressed or anxious or like i was like mostly scared of um of postpartum depression. I was like, that's going to hit me hard. Yeah. I just felt like it was going to be me. But it was actually my husband. It hit my husband. Uh, oh, <laughs> my husband so got like anxiety, like for real bad, bad postpartum anxiety, which I was like, that's a woman's disease. <laughs> you can't take that from me. But he did. He, he Was it, it just the anxiety of like being responsible for a life? It, no, it was like anxiety about like chemicals in the air mm -hmm. and like, would she um, be able to breathe and uh -oh. like all of this shit. And I was just like, oh God. Isn't that the craziest thing about pregnancy? Like we go through all this shit and then you just look over at the guy and he's like, I need to figure out if I can get weed in Atlanta. <laughs> right? I'm like, Dave, not now. <laughs> yeah, I know. They're just like, they're not worried at all. <laughs> but at the end, he started freaking out about anything that he fed me. He was like, 
I think there was kimchi in that, and that has like that has like chemical. And I was like, oh, this is starting to feel a little like while you were pregnant. Yeah, I was like, it's starting to feel a little kooky. But it was like the bigger I got, the more real it got to him, and so he started worrying about like shit that I was eating or shit that I was doing. And then when she was born, it was like, oh god, he he kept leaving our hospital room to go check on the baby in the nursery at the hospital. So I was like. Oh, he can't sleep. Like, he can't he, sleep He, like, developed without... OCD? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Did any part of you like it or get turned on when he was so overly caring about what food you put in your body? No. You're yeah, you're so weird, like that. You're such an eating disorder girl. No, you're but like, she's like... <laughs> so awesome of a guy put me on a diet. <laughs> <laughs> He's ca- Does it turn you on when he counts your calories? Oh, I love when a man yeah. just no. looks over everything I eat. You know, yeah. my, rations it. My lifelong dream is for, like, a corporation to decide what I'm allowed to eat and what I'm not allowed well, I I would love it if you, I want you to swing the other way and I want to be like your feeder if you decide you just want to get really big. I wanted that for this pregnancy and I'm really upset because I can't eat a lot and I I need to stop complaining. I'm very grateful. Um, Esther, the fact that you can't eat a lot is really, uh, it's a blessing because I'm telling you, if your size, if you were able to eat as much as I was able to eat, you die. <laughs> we're, listen, we're all surprised. We're happy and we're surprised. We're pleasantly surprised by what's happened with us. But I'm also pregnancy. like still obviously gaining weight and I'm still getting like the food that I need to get in. But if I was not pregnant and the way I feel, I would be eating, I wouldn't be able to eat. Like it's yeah. just so hard. But um, what, I forgot what I was going to say. Something just about how skinny I am. I don't know. <laughs> I guess. How pretty I am during this pregnancy. How skinny. Has really <laughs> making me glow. How skinny and pretty and teenage. <laughs> um, Is Dave like more into you, do you think? Is he having a little he's pregnancy just fetish? He's so loving and supportive he's being when i saw him in the green room when you were being i thought you were being wild and he was like no she's being great i was like wow dave's turn he loves me for the first time <laughs> and it's really wonderful are you afraid it's not you that he loves no and when it comes out I, he'll i'm choose not baby over you i feel like she's <laughs> like i'm not but thanks for planting that. yeah <laughs> I'm only here to help. Um, <laughs> What's interesting is that I asked Esther the same thing I asked you, Rosebud, which is like, do you want to kill your husband every day when mm-hmm. you're pregnant? Because he's just, all he had to do was orgasm to have this happen. Yeah. And Esther was like, no, actually, he's like really sweet. And I was like, really? And then she was like, no, I f-ing wanted to kill him every day. Yeah. It's just how I would be. Yeah, it didn't matter how nice he was being to me. I was just mad that I had to do it. Yeah. You know? it, I was just mad that I had to do it and that he was, like, got to be, like, living his life and just doing whatever, you know what I mean? Like, it wasn't hard for him physically. It's really surprising. Like, I don't know why I'm still surprised by that, that we really do it all. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. I know. And then you think, you're like, shouldn't men just be serving us at all times? Yeah. Just be- no, we should be laying in bed being fed chocolates. Like, that's, there's a, part of our cycle where that's what we're supposed to be. Right. We're, sp- <laughs> we're supposed to be invalids. <laughs> Just being fed chocolate. <laughs> <laughs> no, I feel like it was like, it wasn't about him. Like, I was just mad at the setup of the world. Like, I was just mad yeah. that we had to do it and that it's like, they don't have to. And I, and then I was on tour and I was like, I was still working. It's like now, and we're expected to work because it's like, God forbid you have mm-hmm. a kid and then everybody just assumes that you don't give a shit about your career. And you're like, that's not the case. Like, I'm still who I am. And yeah. you know what I mean? So it was just like, it got really complicated. I do feel like stressed about like, I'm the breadwinner <laughs> and the yeast maker of my household. Yeast um, maker. But I like, it's if, if I got pregnant right now, it's like my body on the road is what makes me and like supports my family. So I'm like, what? That would be so hard. I wouldn't be able to get off the road at all. Yeah, it's hard. It's yeah. really hard. But at the same time, it's doable. Yeah. Like you think that it's impossible yeah. and then you're you're going through it and you're like, I, I can do this. It's really mm-hmm. hard, but it, I can do it. Well, you just probably something, I'm, I would just guess like it just kicks in. The road like is hard night, anyway. Yeah. The, the road, road feels yeah. like torture anyway. Yeah. So it's just, it's the same. I'm trying to change my um, views on that because I did this thing. I went to Santa Fe with a bunch of my girlfriends that I do ayahuasca with and we had like a little like 
hippie bringing in the New Year week this past weekend. You and did ayahuasca this past weekend. I didn't do ayahuasca this past weekend. I'm doing it next weekend. But um, <laughs> okay, I did. Ketam I did some ketamine treatments and some mushrooms. Maybe too many mushrooms. Honestly, I might be done with mushrooms. It was wild what happened. I'm really? so jealous. It was crazy. No, you would have been so mad at yourself if you took the amount of mushrooms I took. What was so bad? We were walking. Well, I lived in Santa Fe for seven years, so I'm in this ghost town of like so many like different lives I could have lived, which is amazing. I love yeah. going there. But it was like, it was very intense on mushrooms. And we're walking down Canyon Road. It's snowing. And it was like, Canyon Road is where they have all these like art galleries. And every painting is like breathing. And I'm, it was just so much. And I yeah. was like, my feet, I was wearing my Uggs. Did you get Uggs. nauseous and sick? I feel like that's what, ha what I happened. I didn't get nauseous and sick. I had to take a shit. And there were like no bathrooms. Lucky. It was just like... <laughs> I know. And then it just easily came out. I just did a little push and it came out. But um, but my feet, I was wearing Uggs and my feet were wet and I couldn't, I was so high on mushrooms that I couldn't tell if my feet were wet or I was making it up. And then when I realized they were wet, I kept going like, is this a lesson in not making a problem about my feet being wet and just going with the group? Oh, I like that. Or is this the opposite and am I being a doormat? And I need to, to tell feet. the group. I love that even more. Yes. You're like, am I walking on myself? <laughs> and then I, I just know. got new boots. Yeah, but it was like, it was just too many intense decisions and just a very simple, your feet are wet, you're in the snow, you need to get some snow boots. This is, you're going to get hypothermia. Right, like it would have been a lot easier yeah. to just figure that out. Yeah, yeah. if I was sober, it would have been like, can we find a shoe store? I'll see you guys in a second. But I was like, yeah. I needed to be basically you babysat. You turned it into these huge life decisions. <laughs> yeah. And what does this say about my childhood? But um, <laughs> but we did this thing. We rented this like big mansion and we did this thing. It was like an end of the year review and then like a manifestation for the next year. Like it was like 20 pages. Yeah. And they had you go through your calendar of the last year and see all the like big milestones that you had. And it, I, I was on the road every day. Like I, right. every I day. felt last year I felt um, lazy. I felt like I didn't do enough. I had all these like thoughts about myself. And then I look back and I'm like, oh my God, I worked so fucking hard. Yeah. And I was so proud of myself. So now I'm trying to look at the road as like appreciative of myself for like yeah. getting up, getting there, doing this, traveling. But you also do love it. I feel like the way you talk about it, it's like, you love it. You I do, do love, love it. it but and I you've like, wanted it for so yeah. long. that. But it is yeah, it is complicated because it's also like sometimes you're in a middle seat and coach. And sometimes yeah. you're... Never am I in a middle seat oh. and coach. Yeah, I've never will, done I will, that I will go. Before, I'll be honest. I will be... I will knock my teeth out and give blowjobs on the street. I'll buy a new life. Annie, Annie. I will give the best gummy blowjobs to strangers to my stay in first class. My mom watches this, okay? I don't want to give her any ideas. Annie! She's getting older. You might not to knock it out, you just oh, wait it out. Oh my god, my beautiful mother who made me cinnamon vegan banana bread. You seem bread. to be loving your mom more I'm than usual. I'm obsessed with my Thank mom. Thank you. I'm happy. It's really I'm weird. Happy. Are you? Is that like a pregnancy thing? Uh, I do feel. I feel like I owe my mom a lot of apologies. Yeah. Well, uh, you know what I mean. I do love my mom. We're very different, my mom and I. Same. And I love her to death. I do feel like having a baby. I'm just like, oh my god, you're like a fucking angel like I don't know how you did what you did you're I'm like amazed by what she did it's um, crazy but I also like I took my mom actually yes I think it's true I took my mom on a trip to Italy while I was pregnant Aww. like just to like show her Italy because mm -hmm. I was like I wanted to give her a trip that's so, so yeah I guess I was kind of obsessed with her did she have to take care of you on the trip Motherly, yes. Yeah. yeah, she did. Okay. That's the bonus. Mom, yeah. we'll, do, we'll do our trip when my acid reflux is gone, okay? <laughs> we'll do that after the baby comes out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But yeah, no, I She'll just— She'll be carrying all of your luggage <laughs> and the baby. <laughs> yeah. I feel so much more, like, Aww. connected Are you going to let her in the delivery room? That I don't know. I think—well, I don't know. I'm, I'm not—, not I'm mm -hmm. no I mommy. feel like that's between me and Dave. Yeah, that's that's a you and Dave thing. No you don't do want to. No doctors. Not, you're not going to live stream it. <laughs> no. You don't want a moment. <laughs> no <it>? doctors, <laughs> just you and Dave. Yeah, let him figure it out. Oh, that's this is his moment to step up. Um, wait, Rosebud, because we're talking about drugs. Are you seriously sober? Yeah. How? Yeah, okay. I've been sober for 15 years. Wow. wow. Yeah. So. Oh God. How do you? <laughs> that's my. I'm having Whoa. my 15 year no alcohol too. <laughs> yeah, that's a good one. How yeah. do you kick big. back and? Get get it out. I think you stay. I think if you're sober for long enough, you just don't care. Like I, it's like you're kind of always kicked back because it's like. Do you feel like you have a vice in life? 
the oh, vaping. Oh, cute. Yeah. I can't stop. I can't stop with I nicotine. I have that vice, too. Nicotine is my favorite and thing in the world. Ayahuasca. Let me ask you about acid. ayahuasca. Does it help? It's it doesn't seem like it's helping anybody. Oh, my God. It's absolutely unbelievable. It's so it's so incredible. It's crazy. But does happens. it help? I feel completely changed. I feel like I'm able to handle life in a different way, see things differently. I'm not, like, afraid of death. I'm not—I don't live life fearfully anymore. Yeah. I feel really—I love it. Were but you I think, afraid of death before? I was afraid of my dad's death a lot. I was, like, mm -hmm. really, really scared of losing other people. You're like, Dad, I did drugs, and now I don't care if you die. No, the first time <laughs> I did—the first time I smoked DMT, I literally called my dad, and I was like, die, when you, you die, die, it's going to feel so good. You can die now. And he was like, Jesus Christ. <laughs> He's like, to who? Yeah. yeah. That's it, like, the, by the way, the literal opposite of pregnancy is every night at 4 a.m. I'm like, no one's allowed to die. Yeah. Like, this is really scary. Well, that, now you have yeah. like a reason to live, too. It's like you want to like be there for your kids. And yeah. My brother, my mom for my 18th birthday with my twin brother, she was going to get us skydiving. Yeah. And then our 18th birthday came around and she just forgot she told us that, even though it was two against one. We're like, no. And she was like, I never said I'd do that. And we're like, all right. <laughs> so we never went. And then years later, I wanted to go with him. And he's like, I have kids. I don't want to go skydiving anymore. And I'm like, yeah. Mm. So, and I get it. Checks I got out. it. Yeah. Whoa. I was talking out. to Duncan Trussell and his wife, too, a couple years ago when I was in Texas. And they were saying, because I was like, let's go to Burning Man. And they're like, we just don't like have that. Now that we have kids, we like, just don't want to both be going somewhere and you know yeah do you how do you feel like you've changed so far since baby born it's weird like everything changes and and but you're still the same it's weird I don't know like I'm like I'm here right and I am I'm still having a great time it's great to see everybody but I'm not like I would rather be hanging out with her and she can't even talk so I'm just like this is weird that I'm like and then I'll go home and I'll and I'll be with her and I'm like, you're not doing anything. <laughs> like, I'm just like, come on, like, pick it up. <laughs> but watching her, like, come online and start to smile and start to, like, do, like, little coy shit where she smiles and she, like, turns away from you. And then she, like, looks to see if you're, like, smiling. <laughs> you know what I mean? Mm. Like, that kind of shit is just, I, I can't, it feels like. I keep saying this, but it feels like the thing that heroin is trying to do, Whoa. but it's, but like fails. Like, it's like, you can't, it doesn't even, like heroin could never, you know what I mean? That's so inspiring. It feels crazy good. And in spite of how fucking terrible pregnancy was, I, like the second that they showed me my daughter, I was like, holy f I would ruin my life 10 times over just to like get this feeling again. But also you wouldn't, right? Cause you're done at one. I'm done at one, <laughs> but it's it's hard because you're like, my pregnancy was really tough. It yeah. was really tough. And if it wasn't so physically like traumatic, I would do it again. Did you think that it was going to be or were you kind of blindsided by it? I kind of knew it. I kind of knew pregnancy wasn't for me. I was actively looking for surrogates when I got pregnant. But oh, um, yeah. Yeah, I was actively like, because I wanted a kid, but I didn't want to do it myself. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? And um I I was like, it's impossible, like, with my job, with the road. And also, like, I'd had two miscarriages, so I was like, I don't want to go through this again. Yeah. Yeah, and then I got pregnant, and I was like— and then 10 weeks later, I was like, I guess this is for real, because I had never made it past, I think— well, I had made it to, like, 11, but I, I had had, like, what's called a missed miscarriage. That's so, what I had, too. Yeah, yeah, so that was, like, tricky. Yeah, it's like not until you get to that 12 week mark where you're like, okay, I guess I should start taking this seriously. Yeah. Now, is there anything that you maybe like would have wanted to do like skydiving, but probably not that, I hope. Mm -hmm. um, you're not as crazy as Annie. Oh like, my God, you're such a square. I know. <laughs> you're such a nerd. I'm like, I feel like, you know, by the way, the Alaska crazy. Airlines, the flight where the door, like the whole piece of the plane came off, you would have been like, yeah. I'd be like, I, yes. if I survived it, yeah, I'd be like, oh my God, I survived this? Yeah. <laughs> I'm a manifester. You would have been so like annoying after that because you would have just been like punching walls, like trying to break things, like having everything go oh wrong. My God. You get in your car, you punch a hole through the window. I knock the other one, the other door out. Yeah. <laughs> I open all the emergency exits. The pilots yeah. have to like restrain you. Oh my God. But wait, so is there anything though that you're like, oh, I wanted to like go to Coachella and now I'm like, I would never do that. 
No, I never wanted to go to Coachella in my Obviously. life. Obviously. I've never I don't I don't really love big gatherings. Me either. I don't like festive. I hate musical f- music festivals. Musical festivals. Listen to me. I hate music Wait, festivals. That sounds really good. I don't. I like- know when you said musical, I was like Esther's like going to be so triggered. <laughs> <laughs> a musical. Maybe this is your next career. Yeah. Be- what you're a, a musical- you're a podcaster. You're a comedian. You're, and you're a, a musical you're theater a star. Actress, you're a filmmaker, and you put on. An musicals. epic festival of musical musicals. Festival. By the way, I'm in. <laughs> <laughs> musical yes. festivals. Yeah. yeah. How do those not exist? Esterfest. Musical cons. Esterfest is so perfect. <laughs> we call it musical musical con. That does not sound good. Esther, I'll produce it with you. Okay, thank you. Great. I feel like we can definitely get the crazy ex-girlfriend fans out easy. Yeah. yeah. I know you actually were in a fucking musical. I know. Too. I don't know how that happened. I'm so... That was truly an accident. <laughs> I really <laughs> cannot sing. You have been only good or you have an only in good things thank you for saying that i mean don't look too deep on the imdb but just <laughs> believe believe in yourself right now <laughs> don't check it out too hard <laughs> just stay there where you're at mentally yeah. so it's like I'm, no but nothing i'm not like uh there's nothing that i wanted to do before that i don't want to do now because she's there except uh work <laughs> oh, you don't want to work. Like, I want to because I love what I do. Yeah. But I, um, I'd um, i rather be with her. But I also don't want to have a kid that has a mom that gave up on working. Yeah. Like, I'm like, it's really important to me. My mom's a painter. And she had five kids. And by the time five of them were here, she was like, I'm not painting. She For years, she didn't paint. And I remember being, like, bummed out by that. So to me, it's really important. To, has like, she, since working. you guys have grown up, did, has she started painting again? Yeah. Yeah. My yeah. mom's having like a real renaissance. It's yeah. really cool. My mom wrote like a hundred books. Since yeah. The pandemic. It's, it's like, crazy so cool, what happens. Yeah. It's like once the kids are out and they get their groove back, it's fucking awesome yeah. to see. Because you get to see your mom like really like, and I just, I just don't want my kid to ever miss out on seeing me that way while she's growing up. Because I, I mean, I'm sure she's going to grow up and resent me. Regardless, <laughs> but I, it's like you know, you sort of pick and choose yeah. like what you want to be. Well, they have to. For. We talked about this on another thing. There was this this theory I heard this some internet guy saying about how when kids, the reason kids rebel against their parents and start to think their parents are losers is because during their reproductive age group, which is like unfortunately like thirteen to twenty five, they have to naturally be disgusted with their family because they so need they to leave the village and not have incest. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah and so like at twenty five, we come back. Mm-hmm. Okay, I kind of only I I maybe left like I was bad at thirteen. Yeah, but it, I came back quick at fourteen. Yeah, like I was like, there's you nothing else out there shot. for yeah. me. I tried yeah. it. My mommy makes my sandwiches and makes my bed. Like I'm coming back home. <laughs> oh my god, <laughs> <That's>... <laughs> this is real. This yeah, is real. yeah. I'm like, oh my god, this, this is, is real. This is for real. Her yeah. trauma is the the amount they they burritoed her in a mm-hmm. <laughs> also like you guys are like my our moms have this artistic career I'm like no my mom's her career is taking care of me yeah me but that's I think baby. for a lot of I think that's like a creative thing too I'm now I'm realizing yeah. I'm like oh it's like you know if I lived in the middle of nowhere and I wasn't and I worked at Enterprise Rent a Car I having kids would be my way of being creative. Mm-hmm. Do you know what yeah. I'm saying? So it's like there's a cre- – it is a creation. It's a creative impulse. You know what I mean? And I think that's why it takes – Look at Trisha Paytas. She's the most creative mommy on the planet. Who is that? Trisha – you don't know who Trisha Paytas is? Uh-oh. No. This is going to get weird. What? Wow. Babe, I don't know who anybody is. She's this, like, amazing YouTuber who just – became a mommy in the last couple of years and it's just like her whole she's just nailing motherhood on TikTok somehow and on YouTube. Uh-huh. She's just like she does this like tavern character in her basement and then she like entertains her kid with it but it's also funny on TikTok. Okay. It's also not funny like it's weird. Her gender reveal outfits were so cute. She had- she's always her husband she's always like putting her husband in outfits and stuff it's so funny. It's like You're going to have to really send me good. this. Yeah, I will. Yeah. <laughs> but the pitch is not it's, it's so not. funny. Pitch isn't, isn't the pitch isn't killing, but yeah, that, I, I, I don't think I don't think it would. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That, that's fair. I feel like a big question mark that I am like think about a lot, other than what horrible massacre will my birth be, mm-hmm. is will I like want to keep working, or will I want to just totally devote my life to my baby, or is it the most likely thing, which is like I'll want both. It depends. Like, like where I, are you, you don't. At? I'm. 
I want both. I want to I want to keep working and I want to hang out with her and I want to bring her with me and like, you know, I have one kid, so I'm like I can kind of do that. It's, what are your SNL hours? That's a bad question. <laughs> yeah, I don't know how to answer that. It's like, it depends. It I thought be... you were going to say that's the greatest question you've ever heard. <laughs> that, no, I'm just... I was like, oh my God, I feel like that's like the best yes, question. Yes, you're like, it's such a professional no, it question. Because isn't it like you guys work It just depends. All night? Kind of. Yeah, so like Tuesday is like writing night and you work all night. And then, yeah. but I, I like, you know, Tuesday and Wednesday, I don't go into work until like 3 p.m., a lot of the day I'm with her and then I come home a little bit late and I, you know, like she wakes up in the middle of the night and I'm there to like feed her in the middle of the night. So it doesn't feel like I'm missing too much, actually. Like the mm -hmm. only days that I really feel like I'm missing are like all of Saturday. Yeah. And then um, I miss like bedtime Tuesday and I miss. No, that's it. Tuesday is the only day that I like, really every miss week. bedtime. Yeah. So how's it been in the entertainment industry after you've had a child? Mm, it's like, ugh, I mean, it's easy in the sense that it's the same, you know, like I, I don't feel any different, but there's, there is like, it's so fucking toxic the way that women are like supposed to like snap back and like, we're supposed to be like on top of our game and we're, because you do, I'm, I do feel significantly dumber because I'm, my brain is like, I'm spread so fucking thin that it's just, you know, I don't remember. Like, I literally texted you yesterday and was like, how was the glucose thing? And then this morning, we talked about it. And then this morning, I texted her again, how was the glucose thing? And was like, wait, we covered this. Never mind. Like, yeah, I, Whitney was saying that to me too yesterday. She was like, mom, brain's real. It, it is, is real. Yeah. It is real. No. Is but it because you're thinking about? It's because you're thinking about 17 things 17 at the same things. time. Okay. But I feel sharper at the, I also feel sharper because I can do more than I ever thought I could do because I'm just, it's like survival. So it's, it is, it's tricky, but you figure it out. Yeah. You know what I mean? And it's like, there's nothing to worry about because whatever you decide, you, that's going to be the thing you want. So why would you feel... You know what I mean? Like, I was so worried that I wouldn't want to do stand-up anymore. I was yes. so worried that I wouldn't want to do... But now that I'm in this, I'm like, if I chose not to do stand-up anymore, it's because I want to be with my kid. So I'm still choosing the thing that makes me happiest. Yeah. So there's really nothing to, like, worry about. Did I ever tell you guys when I first started dating Dave, like, a month in, I was like, I, I've got Dave. I think I don't... In my head, I'm like, I don't need to work anymore <laughs> and I one morning I was like I think I'm gonna quit stand-up and then, like a couple hours later Dave was like I think it's really weird that you're suddenly quitting the thing you do <laughs> and I was like yeah okay never mind I just, like, walk it back. wait I also want to tell you about the glucose test so it's this like thing that you do it in pregnancy in 28 weeks where you have to drink this like syrupy sugar drink and then wait an hour and they test your blood sugar whatever is um, it to see if you're diabetic or yeah. gestational yeah. diabetes yeah and online everyone's like it's so horrifying it tastes like syrup you're gonna be so nauseated it's so gross so for six months i've been like oh, i'm so scared it's gonna make me sick i literally loved it you loved it it was yeah. so Seconds. good it yeah, was yeah, yeah. so fucking good <laughs> you're like delicious can i have another <laughs> so good yeah i thought it was gross but i did i wasn't like this isn't the worst thing i've ever tried yeah. like yeah. clearly you guys well, you have a history of a sweet tooth. Yeah, I don't know where you're at these days. I've I just know where you were when we became friends. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> there's a lot there. of bags of gummy bears. <laughs> yes, I love gummy, gummy worms. bears. <laughs> there's things around. There were gummy things, gummy shapes. <laughs> All sorts of oh. being fed to you by your keeper. <laughs> by my roommate, <laughs> your keeper. <laughs> I had a roommate who was my keeper. When I met mm. Esther, she was living in a studio apartment with a a woman and avocado air, and um, <laughs> she was. Oh my god! Esther had like a small little. My own little bed. Her little was, bed. Yeah. And she was cared for. We slept in the same room. I love, I've, ne I've never she been happier. She was cared for. <laughs> That's so nice. Yeah. I'm like, Dave, should we get separate beds so it feels more like. Well, when you're living in a Dave, you were like, Annie, do you want to move in here? I was living in my car. I was like, I think I need to stay in the car. I, I remember I, you, I remember you wanting to move in. I had, there was options, <laughs> but I, I remember I couldn't do I was like, I can't. I would have. I. I don't think I would have thrived in that situation. Oh. How long ago was this? That was probably like 14 years, twelve or 11. thirteen or fourteen years ago. Okay. Yeah. 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 As for um, the dude at camp, like no, so, I couldn't sleep over. Yeah. See, I'm. Yeah. I didn't either. So I feel like I'm always trying to 
to have that experience. Like camp the, ruled. There's camp. I love camp. Camp was so good. Camp was like awesome. being in a room with someone and like. I I never was like, oh, I need to be at my parents' house. I was yeah. never like that. I always wanted to be like gone. I was I like, I want to be out. Sleepovers. I want to go. Yeah. I was like, there's so many times I tried to run away, like just for, just to see. You know what I mean? Come for you. I wasn't even mad. I was just like, I'm gonna go. Let's just see what happens. Yeah, nobody <laughs> noticed. They were just like, we have five kids. Like, yeah, yeah <laughs> get and lost. They can afford. Yeah. yeah. When I was 13, Why they were paint? ready for me to leave the village. They were like, get out. <laughs> One other thing that I wanted to bring up earlier that I forgot was the reason that not being able to eat a lot right now, like I, because. The acid reflux, it makes it so I can only eat a small amount and I have to be, eat very bland foods. A lot is coming up for me because I have a very serious emotional dependence on being able to eat what I want. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, I feel like I'm going through that on top of it all where I'm just like, oh, I have to sit with my uncomfortable feelings. And I don't know. I'm just. Are you finding other things to do? Are you journaling or anything? I am journaling a lot. I'm journaling a it's lot. It's with these nails, isn't it? <laughs> oh God, no, I was like, oh, my palms are... <laughs> um, I feel like I'm just speaking into Siri and yeah, I'm like, dictates. dear diary. <laughs> like, what do you guys do when you're, the discomfort hits? I don't know. I take a special little drug called semi-glutide and it, <laughs> I no longer have those things. I just eat like a regular person now. Really? Uh-huh. Wow. So how is it going? I, I really like it. It's helping my brain a lot. What is it? How is it affecting you? I just am not having like obsessive thoughts. Mm. I just eat. I'm hungry. I, I'm having a very different experience than everyone else that I've heard that's on it. Everyone's like, my stomach hurts. I'm not hungry. I'm like, no, I'm hungry. I just eat. Really? Regular meals. You're not getting nauseous? Not even a little bit. Nothing's no bad effect. Yeah. Most people are like, I can't eat on Ozempic. Yeah. And you're like. Maybe I'm not on the same dose as them or something. Okay. But I don't even have like a will to lose weight anymore. Like before I was like, oh, I could lose some weight. Now I'm on it. I'm like, oh, I feel great. You're just like at peace on it. Yes. Yeah. 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 It's like That's awesome. like me on weed. I'm, it's just like, <laughs> oh, that fixed things. When I'm on yeah. weed, I'm like, what did I say yesterday? <laughs> <laughs> oh my God. What have I done? <laughs> I'm like so I get like so doubtful and filled with shame when I smoke weed. It's so bad for me. Yeah. It's not for me. Esther, is that the thing you miss the most, would you say? Weed? I would have said that in the beginning. And now I just want to not have a sour taste in my mouth. I just want to be comfortable. Like I want to feel comfortable. <laughs> That's you want to give birth. That's wanna, really what it is. Yeah. And the other thing too is it's like there's a lot of thoughts about what's the postpartum going to be? And it's like, I just want to get on the other side and be on the journey to recovery. So it's weird that like, I'm on these next three months are just, so that's what I want. Okay. So are you feeling like impatient? Like you wish you could like snap your fingers and the baby's here? Or do yeah. you feel like you need three months to be like prepared to take care of it? No, I want it. I want this yeah. over. Yeah. I'll figure it out on the spot. That's fine. Mm, yeah. I don't care. I felt that way too. I was like, I'm pretty sure I got this. I just am so uncomfortable. I want to be, I want to feel better. And nine months is such an interesting like time period because it's so much time and also so little time. It's like. It's actually 10 months too. Yeah. It's always like, it's longer. I don't really know how, like I can't do the math, but there's a couple of like trimester or there's like certain trimesters that are like more than fucking 12 weeks or whatever. But anyway, yeah, it's hard. When it's over, it's, you are so crazy. What do you for mean? A little while. Wait, what do you mean? Like, <laughs> what do you mean? Like, you just, I can't describe it. I just like was crying. I, maybe it's because I haven't <laughs> cried. I literally didn't cry for like so long that when I, when she was born, I was like, why can't I stop? I can't stop crying. Mm. Like, and Happy then my or sad. mom, my mom actually, to her credit, knew this and I did not know this. Like, I kept putting the baby down to go cry because I was like, I don't want to like, fuck up the baby with like my, me like sobbing over her. And my mom was like, no, you need to lie down on the couch. I'm going to put the baby on your chest and you will feel better. And I didn't know that the baby actually makes you feel better. Like I had no idea that that actually like lowers your anxiety levels and like raises your oxytocin. And like, I just didn't know any of that. I just thought I was like, oh, I don't want to, like, piss her off, like, crying well, all over. My frozen like, embryos are kegling right now, by the way. <laughs> They're in the freezer just kegling. <laughs> I will say Donut provides that comfort for me. Like, yep. she. How do you feel about your – how many dogs yep. do you have? Um, one, one. One dog. dog. Yeah. How, do you, how did you feel about your dog when your daughter was born? I don't care. Yeah, it's different now, right? I don't yeah. care. Like, wow. I forget. I like forget. you don't care about the dog? I don't. Oh, my gosh. I love her. Yeah, of course. But I don't think about her. This won't be me. It will. It won't be. 
I will check in and be honest when it happens, but I don't. I it do you can't. know what I'm imagining? I've been I, a you dog. Know what? I shouldn't I'm say it. Will. You. It, there's definitely a possibility that it could because I. But I, Natasha I just, she's she's the not same like, thing. This is what I want for you. I want there to be a baby carrier that for twins. Yeah, and I want baby and dog. And yeah. Baby Dave yeah. keeps being like, Donut, that's sister. Like your sister is coming. <laughs> yeah. That's her primary name in our household is Donut's sister. But I yeah. know it'll change. And also Do you have a name? Kind of. Dave like told it to two of his friends and they had a really negative you reaction. You cannot tell people the name. I know. You can't. I'm also like they're losers, Dave. Like who cares? Yeah, it's gonna be a swing. It's also, gonna his be name a is swing. Dave and yours is Esther. So it's like anything you do is gonna be good. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> he has a normal name. You have an no, elderly you woman's have a cool name. name. It's because yeah. th those names are coming back. It's like, coming around. Yeah. But it was a rough. How do you feel about your name? Because you have a like unique name. I like it. You've have you? Did you not like it when you were like like? No, little? I mean I was called Bud my whole childhood. I love oh, that. So that's I'm cool. like yeah. I don't. You know, Rosebud is like the feminine version of that. And then, yeah, I just, I've always liked like weird names. I've always Thanks liked them. Too. Yeah, me too. Yeah. Banana Bray. Banana Thank Bray. You. Thank you so much. Did you know, Annie, that 95% of pregnant women are, are on not the show talking to me about my <laughs> huge life choice every <laughs> day? And they're not getting their recommended daily intake of key omega 3s, okay? And that is why ritual. I cannot tell you how this has saved me during pregnancy. You know what, too, is so fun about it? We actually just put a funnel into her mouth and we just pour the powder, <laughs> the powder. straight in. And it absorbs her acid reflux. Their prenatal contains 350 milligrams of eco-friendly vegan omega-3 DHA in every serving sourced from algae, algae oil instead of fish. And it's also important to take a prenatal before you're pregnant. Like their prenatal vitamin has all of the right things. They source their ingredients in a really great way that I'm not explaining well, but they have omega-3 DHA to support your baby's brain development, choline, which you never heard of it, but then you get pregnant and it's very important and it's hard to get. So the prenatal multivitamin has choline and methylated folate to support baby's neural tube development. The capsules feature a delayed release and they are rigorously tested and validated by a third party. And also the Ritual Essential Protein. I make a daily shake. I add this pregnancy and postpartum protein in there. It has all the things I need. It's female founded. They use scientific tools to lower carbon packaging. They're just, it's awesome. I'm so excited that they are finally sponsoring us. Sorry, I had to get pregnant first. Why settle for a multivitamin you're not 100% sure about? Ritual was literally built on trust, so you know it's the real deal. Get 40% off your first month for a limited time at ritual.com slash trash Tuesday. This offer is only available through January 31st. Start Ritual or add Essential for Women prenatal to your subscription today. That's ritual.com slash trash Tuesday for 40% off. DraftKings Casino is bringing you only the best classics like blackjack, roulette, and slots, plus exclusive games you won't find anywhere else. Annie, you have been talking about DraftKings all month. I'm so excited because download the DraftKings Casino app now and use code Trash Tuesday. New players get an instant deposit match up to $100 in casino credits when you deposit $5 or more. That's code Trash Tuesday only on DraftKings Casino. The crown is yours. Gambling problem? Call 1-800-GAMBLER or visit www.1800gambler.net. In Connecticut, help is available for problem gambling. Call 888-789-7777 or visit ccpg.org. Please play responsibly. 21 plus physically present in Connecticut, Michigan, New Jersey, Pennsylvania, West Virginia only. Void in Ontario. Eligibility and other restrictions apply. One per new customer must opt in and make minimum $5 deposit within seven Seven days, 168 hours of registering new account. Max match $100 in casino credits, which require one time playthrough within seven days, 168 hours. See terms at casino.draftkings.com slash new player offer 2024. You know, it really is a time of year where I want a hard reset. And my hair is one of those places where I'm like, I need, I want my hair to be cute. I want it to look good. I want it to look clean. Thank you to Living Proof's Clarifying Detox Shampoo. My hair is getting that reset it needs and is feeling clean and healthy. I swear by this dry shampoo. It is literally the best. And I, I have seen all the sluggies are so excited that we have a Living yeah. Proof sponsor because they already use them. They already love them. And by the way, we are Living Proof that Living Proof works. We are, I mean, this is, I when we got the sponsor, I was screaming. 
Also, Living Proof's products are uniquely formulated to address the root cause of your hair concern and never to just conceal it, which is what most other brands do. And if you're not sure what product your hair needs, instead of guessing, I personally started by taking Living Proof's AI online hair care quiz, which analyzes your specific hair care needs and styling goals and then uses a first-to-market technology to help customize the right hair care routine for you or for me. And they always, this is the most important thing, especially during baby time, they formulate without silicones, harsh sulfates, SLS, SLES, parabens, and phthalates. They're also PETA certified, cruelty-free, color safe, and safe for chemically treated hair. Thank you. Give your hair the hard reset it's been asking for with Living Proof. Go to livingproof.com slash trash Tuesday and use the code trash Tuesday at checkout to get 15% off your order. That's livingproof.com slash trash Tuesday. Code trash Tuesday for 15% off. Livingproof.com slash trash Tuesday. Code trash Tuesday. Annie and I have been using Living Proof on the road, the dry shampoo, for 10 years. I can't believe they're our sponsor. I know. It's shocking. You guys get on, get on board. Something very interesting that has happened. Like, we did a poll about sex, preferred sex time. This is a big shift from pregnancy and babies. But are you morning sex or afternoon sex? I'm no sex, thank you. (laughs) (laughs) Got that part sewn up too, right? How did you not offer night sex? Uh, Sorry, night sex. I'm I'm a night sex person, so I don't know why I didn't. No, night sex. Night night sex, sex, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I feel like a lot lot of men are morning. Men are morning sex because their testosterone levels are the highest in the morning. I like morning sex with a you. Where you just cry. Yeah. <laughs> you, you, suffer. Guys- you suffer all your losses at once. Mm-hmm. I love a spelling joke on a body. <laughs> <For me. laughs> Good girl. Big guys, I'm learning. Big mm-hmm. girl. I I'm definitely like a morning sex. sex because it's more intimate because you smell and you're like grosser. Uh, but like when the Julian. Well, Julian. No, when you're the right partner doesn't care. care. It's, it's like nice. All days. No. No. I've definitely married my soulmate. I don't want to f-ing smell him. <laughs> I don't, you know what I mean? I love him, but I don't want it. I'm like, yeah. don't stink I do me. love that Todd, like, does not, will not go out unshowered. And it's a little annoying sometimes because I'm like, don't you want to go on a walk or go to the coffee shop or whatever? And he's like, no, he has to shower. That's really fascinating. This is one thing that I have to say I love about Dave, but also sometimes I'm like, well, it's just he's the perfect guy for me because he and I will forget to shower for a long time and I love that because I I people like I remember when I would hang out with Benji all the time he would all he would shower like three times a day but like I do find comfort in like a guy that's just like dirty right and doesn't care about his own cleanliness although I just don't want to like is- them no, go wash yeah. your dick go watch yeah your dick. but scrub that's that, cute that, scrub that cock up is todd catholic was he catholic no no he just likes to be clean yeah. i love how i'm like there needs to be a serious reason why <laughs> he showers because that's really imagine Todd was just really religious and i never told you <laughs> <laughs> wait did you really get the greatest snake a of all time? huge snake i got wait, what we have six snakes. how are we just now bringing this up we have I six snakes because guys you, you have real children <laughs> No, I wait, say, but six snakes? My I saw new this. Snake. I sent this to everyone in my family. My new snake. I was going to bring him, but I didn't know if you're scared of snakes. I don't care if Thank you, you for not bringing no, him. No, no, no. I don't care if you're scared. <laughs> I've known you too long, bitch. This is the third year. This is the third year. It's not, I don't have a picture of him up there. It was on our story. It's big, though. It, looks it like looked like Britney, Britney Spears. Spears. He's <laughs> so awesome. What kind of snake? He is a uh, butter itchy, it's a boa. He's so cute. Okay, so my next episode of Annie Wood, he's around my neck the whole time. And then he's his tail's around here and he's holding the mic to me. If I can train, I don't know if this is possible. If I can train this snake to move microphones to wh- who's talking. Can you imagine the man on the streets? Oh my God. Do you ever worry it's going to eat? Like you? Eat you? No. What? I hear this story every day. <laughs> I hear this story every goddamn day, you f***ing <laughs> hacks. <laughs> fucking talking shit. Is Randy safe? Randy is fine, and Randy's never gonna. We're never gonna. They're never gonna be. Oh, it is big. It is big. Oh, He's the best. Because all really of them pretty. are babies. Like all of our snakes will get this big, but we have to wait years. Wow, their colors are. He's really gorgeous. pretty. And I bought him from. Okay, so I went to the. Um, Why do you I need did, six though? <laughs> here's the thing. Once you get a reptile, you're like, 
It's an we addiction. We need all the reptiles. They're so beautiful. They're so cool. There's all these different breeds. And My dad always asks, how's Todd? Because he met him that one time in Palm Springs. Aww. And I'm like, well, Todd is addicted to reptiles. And it's He like- had to come out. He had to come out to <laughs> yeah. me before the engagement. He did? And I was like, yeah, he's like, I'm a reptile guy. And how like, soon before, like how into the relationship did he come out about the reptiles? It was like six months ago. There's a lot of guys on like and we have apps 15 and stuff that like reptiles. reptiles. You have fi- you're up to 15. Okay, so I went to the reptile super show. This is, it's outside of there. <laughs> uh, to do man on the street. And Todd, I'm always out of town when it's when it's happening. So Todd's always like FaceTiming me. And I'm the like, why are you show. not paying attention? He's like, he's always like in this frenzy. And I'm like, what do you just leave the reptile? You're being crazy. And then yeah. I went and I was like, <sighs> Like the first thing I saw was this gecko. I don't know what kind of gecko it is, but it's like, it's got eyes like this big. I started crying. I was like, I need one. It's so cute. Oh my They're God. just, it's like moving, living art. And it's like so fun to take care of them. I got a pine snake um, a couple, like a month ago. Mm-hmm. And that was going to be my snake. And I was going to like train him to want to hang out with me and stuff. Yeah. But he had been, when I when I first saw him, we were in, at the reptile store and he, they they didn't have a, a big enclosure for him yet so he was just living in this like little box and I felt so bad for him and I was like oh my god I want to rescue you and he was like looking at me he was like get me out of here Mm -hmm. and then he immediately like burrowed into the dirt and I've never seen him again and I was like fuck I was like I want my snake and then people at the reptile store were like oh you can just put less dirt in but I was like I can't he's too happy he's like yeah living his best life. So then I was like, I'll just get another snake. Do you, <laughs> you feel like got- the snake loves you? Like, do you feel the love from, like, do you- He hugged me. Okay, so when I went to the reptile, there's, like, all of these different booths and stuff, and there was a booth booth with all girls. There was one, it was a trans boy, too, but I we had to go through the process of me finding that out. Mm-hmm. But um, okay. immediate misgender. Uh, I was like, look at all these hot ladies. Uh, sorry. <laughs> Um, my bad but so I was like what's the story what's going on here and so the woman told me that her husband had been cheating on her for 22 years Uh and she found out and he left her with all of these snakes so she was it was her divorce sale so I had to buy oh my gosh do you feel like your love of reptiles is influenced by your love of Todd or do you think you like already loved reptiles. I think I would never, if it, if I was dating any of my ex-boyfriends and they tried to pull this shit on me, I would have been like- You'd be like, get out. Go yeah. f- yourself. Right. But I was very, it, it's exciting to see Todd excited about something and doing something. Todd like works so hard, he's always working. So, so it's you like don't nice think to- you don't think it was just like a sort of a latent love of reptiles that you hadn't discovered I've always liked, him? I've always been like a pick me girl in the sense of like, I've always wanted to like appear tough because I have brothers. I don't know. I always wanted oh, to like be like. That's not pick me. Trying like, to be like guys, cool girl. to my brothers and like. I would say like, oh. I don't know. I always was like trying to be like. Fit in with the guys. Not afraid of spiders and stuff. Yeah. But then it became the truth and then uh-huh. I'm not like afraid of anything. And my mom was really afraid of snakes. She, there's like one of our stories that she always tells, which I'm like, you can, you can stop telling this one. We were like little babies. She had two, you know, I have my twin brother and then my older brother's two and a half years older. So we were so little and we were in a canoe at um, her cousin's place in Vermont and they have a pond. And she, in the canoe where they put the rope that ties the canoe up, she, there was like a bunch of snakes and my mom's like deathly for them. So she just dropped us and abandoned us in the canoe. Honestly, uh, relatable. I would and do the same thing. so I think because I was like, well, my mom's kind of a bitch. <laughs> I've always been like, maybe I'll get a bunch of snakes. Which, how does she feel about the snakes? She's cute about it. I think really? that I think that we started watching all these reptile YouTubes and stuff, and I think a lot of the the these reptile places kind of help people get over these fears. And I love conquering fears. You know that shit. I mm. love to like whatever I'm afraid of. I like to do it and have the high afterwards of surviving. Uh-huh. And so I do think that we were we're raising like good snakes. I hate conquering fears. Really? I love it. <laughs> I really hate it. I, I have no interest in conquering a fear. I just, if I'm afraid of something, I'm like, that's not for me. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'm like, no, I'm good. I kind of lean more towards that. Like I still oh, have, kinda? I still haven't learned how to ride a bike or swim. So well, the fact that you started doing drugs in any way was the wildest thing. I've, I I never thought I would see it. I, I couldn't I'm either. It. No. When it, did you start smoking weed? Literally it was all because of my miscarriage, which is sort of sad, but rock on um i <laughs> miscarriage is sort of sad <laughs> yeah after my dnc the surgery where they like take it out because it was a it's mis- called a dnc a dnc yeah oh dnc yeah. i was like Dial- the dnc the dnc is Dilation always trying to get rid of babies yeah yeah so after uh that i like 
a couple of days after the surgery, I was it. I just had this horrible pain, like bleeding, really, really bad on the floor of the bathroom. Like I think I'm gonna die. Never felt so bad. And then I was like, oh my god, I just remembered they gave me prescription pain pills. Uh-huh. Go get them. Took one. Felt high the <laughs> yeah. first time in my life and was like, I I'm so happy. I love this. Mm-hmm. And then I was telling some of my guy friends, I was like, you guys, I tried hydrocodone and it is awesome i want to do it more and they're like whoa, 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 whoa. like yeah no 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 don't like, do that don't, don't do, do that, that. Well, yeah and yeah. then one of them was like i think what you're looking for is just like weed and i was like okay and then i that's when i like tried an edible i'm so yeah. glad you're not a pill head can you imagine esther was just a pill head oh, well, the, con- the constipation alone I oh i can't i don't even i i avoid painkillers at all costs because of that Awful. Being constipated is a is my. But now I do still life. take a half of one when I get really bad period cramps, and that does really help me. Like, I'm still pampering. If like you decide to, if you decide to do a C-section, make sure that you, they they like will give you, like f- fentanyl and whatever, and like just make sure that they don't. If you want to be like present enough yeah. to like remember it, there's like an anxiety thing that they can give you without you getting like. F- up and um, really like is that what you did yeah wait so did you were you really mild on the pain stuff because of addiction yeah I didn't so like everything I was like once uh we do it so different I'm like free laps no like (laughs) once they were done I was like just give me Tylenol and Motrin I'll just I'll just take that was it hard to not because you can't really laugh and shit when you have a c-section yeah but nothing was funny anyway (laughs) You're like, Andy, you've turned into a hack. Since nothing this baby was came funny. Out of me. Yeah, I was like, this sucks. Like, nothing was funny. Everything was so real. And I was so like, everything just felt like, like, I would try to write a joke and I'd be like, I feel like that's going to hurt somebody's feelings. Like, I've never thought that in my life. And it was, I was like, this is crazy. And then after like a month, I was like, all right, I'm back. That's funny. Really? Yeah. Okay. Now, how long did your C section hurt? I felt better literally the day of my C section. I felt better than I did pregnant. So I, I <laughs> truly, that's like how much pain I was in, you know? So it was, it was great. I was, I was up, I was walking around. It was hurt. It was painful, but it wasn't anything compared to carrying around a fing fetus. It really sucks, huh? It sucks. <laughs> it's so bad. What are yeah. you going to do with your placenta? I don't want to. I don't know her. I don't. I don't want to know her. I don't want to know her. <laughs> did you do something with that? No, I'm good. My I, hippie, never, I don't remember. Did, did Whitney? I feel like Whitney would have done something so weird with it. Like she yeah, probably like know. drugged us with it at some point. <laughs> <laughs> like we probably ingested her placenta. <laughs> when did the placenta eating thing start? Was that the Kardashians that started that? It, no, it had. No, to it had to have started before Dogs that. Dogs do it though. It's so funny to see a dog give birth and yeah, it's just nasty. Go, like, they eat the bag. Yeah, it's so cute. I don't know about cute. I it's... know. I remember being so traumatized. My dog had puppies when I was like eight, oh, and what? I was the first Best one that saw life it. Experience ever. It, I was horrified. Tell us everything. Your it dog was... had puppies. Yes, my That's parents really read her, and it was. They took her to the, she was a Bichon. They took her to this like farm. She definitely got like, everyone was inbred. Everything was inbred. She came back. She smelled so bad. I remember we were like driving her back from the, it's like, we just took our dog to like a gang. <laughs> we got our dog. <laughs> she was already like an autistic dog that you like pet her and she removes herself from the room. Yeah. You have like, if she laid on you, you'd be like, don't move. Pinky's going to stay. <laughs> and then you'd like touch her or like have any joy. And she was out. She was like, I'm not here for you. Yeah, and yeah, she yeah. was probably like, you got me raped, which was how I felt about my parents for a long time. My <laughs> grandma's dog over the holidays was sexually assaulted and got pregnant. By you? No. Your grandma's dog was sexually assaulted? <laughs> yeah. She, they All of a sudden, one day they were like, she's not feeling well. And they took her in and they're like, she's pregnant, but all the puppies didn't make it. And they had to give her an emergency surgery. She got a DNC. Yeah. yeah. Well, that's <laughs> that happens like that. all the time Doggy with dogs. DNC. Like one of them doesn't make it right. Um, if they have like multiple. Oh, really? well, they have, yeah, a bunch. Yeah, it happens, happens a with lot. snakes too, guys. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, what? Are you going to have How like- do snakes give birth? Like, I, I feel like they have to do it out of their they mouth. Oh, right. They lay I don't know where they come from. Yeah, where does I'm it come out? There's a little, there's a little, I had a snake in college. There's a little. In college? Yeah. Damn, you to, were like, I'm never getting laid. Yeah, well, <laughs> Where I did was it work? in closeted, so. <laughs> oh, you were closeted? You were like, like, I need a, I need something cock-like in my room. Yeah. yeah, exactly. So they lay eggs. How yeah. big are the eggs? They're, I mean, I think it depends. I think they're like 
Like this Bow ones can be thing. really big and they can be like soft too, like really soft. Do you want me to bring the snake in? Yeah. I was just gonna ask that. I yeah. kind of wish you brought it in today. I know, I can't care about your feelings anymore. Esther, you and me will be on the same <laughs> It's been nine months, I can't, it's like so many months. It's like I, I, can't, I can't be going so easy on you. I would, as long as it doesn't touch me, I'm fine. Yeah. I just don't, I'm not ready I just to touch can't. a snake pregnant. I'm excited to see how Kalila reacts. She'll probably be into it. Or not, wouldn't it be no. fun if there was a twist? There's always, sometimes there's a twist with Kalila. Yeah, you never know. that's true. What's Kalila's sign? Uh, None of us know. Scorpio? Oh, Scorpio. Maybe. Scorpio. Okay. All right. She, What's yours? I'm Pisces. Pisces. Me too. When's your I'm birthday? Um, March 16th. Do you know what sucks yeah. about being a Cancer? Is I can never wear the necklace. Everyone can wear their... It's like you can't wear Cancer around your neck. But honestly... We don't need to wear Pisces around our neck. Nobody needs to be wearing their yeah. sign around their neck. I think neck. that's good for you. I think this is good. Yeah. <laughs> but I hear you're saying it is the worst name for all. Time. And it's we're weird. Yeah. And it's 69. You could wear the sign, the 69 sign. Yeah, that's fun. And then yeah. you get a lot out of that. Yeah. You guys get a fun sign. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It is fun. Mine is the water or whatever, and I can't swim. So I have to live with that. You can swim. You just don't. You just don't want to. <laughs> I can't That's a funny swim. Way to put it. I choose not I to. I always think of Esther as the little the baby in Nirvana. Just throw her in the thing with her little penis. <laughs> <laughs> throw her in the pool. Little, tiny little Andy's baby a penis. cancer. I know. I think that's why we get along. Yeah. 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 He Very is a emotional. cancer too. So I know I dated a cancer and I was like, I can't. Is no. there do you think there's truth it's to that? Because my yes. best childhood best friend and Dave are both the same sign. Is that like a thing? Are we Truth to what? That we're you didn't to say the thing. thing. Like, <laughs> well, I've only dated Gemini. You can't read my mind yet. <laughs> um, that like you get a you have the same sort of similar connection with people who have the similar like. Both I've two never cancers. dated the same sign over and over. Oh like I, I, I that's happened to me. I, I only have dated Gemini's my whole life. It's yeah. crazy. I can't really? even believe it. Wait, yeah, are you a like Gemini? Everyone. No, I'm oh. a Cancer. But I'm just saying, every guy I've ever dated has been a Gemini. Dave and Christine are Gemini's. Yeah. I've never dated the same sign. I've yeah. always, it's always been a different sign. Have you had any, Ooh. okay, so like this past. Because you're like water. You don't have yeah, I'm kind of like, yeah. well, that didn't work. Let's try something yeah, new. Yeah. I'm not like water. I can confirm. I yeah, don't you're go not with like any water. flow. I actually <gasps> don't feel like I'm very Pisces from when I, well, like when I read the descriptions. Because this is all fake and stupid. Yeah. Come on, but Annie, you, just because of your necklace, now we're all on this. No, I asked. I asked. I asked what Kalila was. I, I know. Was well, fa- signs are like, it's yeah, you. she did start it. Yeah, you it's bitch. you. Yeah, you have to just put it on me. Okay. <laughs> Pisces cunt. <laughs> Such a Pisces thing to do. I don't know anything about the signs, but it's fun to play with. I always say, like, with like tarot and stuff. It's like if I start to like, if I go to see a psychic, like I'm not doing well. Yeah, like, no. If I'm like, mm. I'm like, I could have told you that. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But it's like so like. It's fun for like a date idea. You oh, know what I mean? that's hot. If you go on like a date and you get. Like, your tarot cards read that's like a fun date that does it sound is fun hot. it's yeah. like a fun silly thing it's very scary i had a tarot reader at my birthday party and it was a huge hit yeah that's like because a fun it's just a party woman telling trick. you yeah oh do you know what i actually that's had done at my idea. sex party my new year's sex party it wasn't my party i went to a party there was a guy who did tea tree tea leaf yeah, readings yeah. like harry potter so they do is that what he did well the woman did you it. are <laughs> yes something julian you are something <laughs> It must have been hard to stay in that closet. It must have been. You must have been clinging at the door. You just wanted to bust open and show, just, like fucking shivering, Ooh. cold, Jasmine. cold, dark universe oh alone. Oh my god, he was just. F-ing. You had a dildo in that closet with you, didn't you? <laughs> Wait. So what was the sex party? It was okay. So New Year's, I I was like texting the girls. I was like, "What are you guys doing for New Year's?" I saw a movie with my parents. I also was texting you. Cause, yeah. Oh, because you were like. I texted. I'm stuck at home. And I was like, I'm at home. I, I made the mistake of, I watched my niece, who's a toddler, while my sister went to a concert, because my sister's pregnant again. And I was like, this is the last time she's going to get to do a New Year's, like, where she, like, gets to go mm-hmm. all out. So I was like, I'll watch Lucy. But, like, my family was in town for, like, forever. They just kept coming, like, in waves. And then my sister came, and I was like, I'll watch Lucy. And then, it was, so it was just, like, I was like, this is, like, the so worst. Rough. I can't. It's so rough. It's so rough. And I was like, I can't do this. I wanted to stay home for for the holidays because I thought, okay, we have a newborn. Like, it's easy. Everyone came to us. Everyone was like, we're coming to see the baby. And I was like, okay, it I didn't. It just feels like never end. Like, the holidays, like, it's just. They're just never going to end. Yeah, it's they're forever. Just, they're, they're forever. 
it's and we're forever. never going to escape. And it's, I guess we're lucky our families love us. I think New Year's Eve should be canceled. I, I think, think it's so I think stupid. I love New Year's Eve. Why? I That's think so New Year's weird. Eve should be your birthday. I've like, always New loved New Year's Eve. I'm like, I've only movie had the with most my parents, time. go to bed early. I love that feeling. Wake up refreshed the next day. I don't know. I oh just, my God. When I drank, New Year's was like, New Year's Eve was just so fun. Yeah. Oh I loved it when I drank. Like, I love it. Wake up in some weird Brooklyn apartment. Yeah. What is it? New boyfriend. I'm like, oh, I have a new boyfriend. Yeah. And I want to get to the sex party. Obviously, I'm wet, but <laughs> what, like, what is your, what Her is the broke. New Year's Eve that you are wanting that would be so great? So, like, this judgmental face. I want to know. On this bitch. No, work maybe, on this. maybe I'll lo- let want her that live. Too. No, no, let no. New York is different. Like, I was just telling them, like, New York, you have like this big community of people that you f- love, that you, they're like your family. You stay up until 7 a.m., you come out of the bar, the sun's coming up, you're just like, arm in arm with each other. It's like, it doesn't matter, sober, drunk. Like, my, I could be standing next to somebody fully on Molly and it's like, I am telling them that I love them. You know what I mean? It's like, yeah. it doesn't, I just like love New Year's Eve. I it's love being with people that- It's a good celebration. It's like a secular ending and beginning. It's yeah. so fun. Wow. I also There's so much pressure on New Year's. To like I don't feel that pressure. I think it's fucking, I don't know. It's like, it's a new year. It doesn't feel like pressure to me. It feels like It's like a birthday we're all having at the same time. Yes. And some people don't like their birthdays. I love my birthday. I yeah. I don't like my birthday, but I love New Year's Eve. Why don't you like your birthday? Because it's all about me and I don't it's embarrassing. like that's embarrassing. Yeah. It's like and then you you have a party and you invite a bunch of people and it's always the one that you don't want to sh- that shows up first. And you're like, oh, God. <laughs> but as the birthdays go on. I didn't on, even want you to come. But as you know the what birthdays I mean? go on, those invites stop going out. I was talking all my girlfriends <laughs> that I hung out with in Santa Fe are like in their late 40s and 50s. I was saying how I really want to stop and I've been working on just like, like I I don't want to like put myself out for other people's feelings anymore. It's just like so disrespectful to myself. Like I just want to be with my boundaries and stop like, you know. Yeah. It might not be good for you, but um, <laughs> this might end up bad for you. No, <laughs> <I'm> just, <laughs> like, but can I just, I'm sorry to keep interjecting here, but sorry. like this has been a huge thing for pregnancy that I'm realizing is when you're pregnant, I can't put my mask on before someone else's because the, that's taking over for me. And it, and I don't operate well like right. that. I need to put my mask on, meet my needs so that I can be great for everyone right. else. Yeah. It doesn't. So, yes. I've never I've never seen you as someone that doesn't put their mask on first. And that's why pregnancy is not easy. Oh, I see what you're saying. Yes. Oh, I see what you're saying. No, pregnancy is like I, I need... I need to no, take care I of myself. No, I admire that part of pregnancy, and I'm like, oh, that would be so nice to be, like, only living to take care of this thing. But I— Yeah, it's the opposite. It's really hard. But so, yes, like, that is the—I think all women need to be a little more selfish. But they were saying—but mm-hmm. my but my girlfriends were saying, they're like, well, welcome to your 40s. Like, that's this is the decade of that. It's, like, mm-hmm. going to— Rule. Yeah. Whoa. Okay, that's good. So when I turn forty in ten years, it'll be. So <laughs> <laughs> Wait. So tell us about More the sex 40. party. Okay. So I met these uh, these guys. Todd and I were watching these guys. Um, it, Danny Burke and Reckless Ben. They uh-huh. do. They on. They have YouTube channels where they infiltrate cults. And Todd for like months has been like, you, we've got to get these guys on, on Annie Wood. We've got to like hang out with these guys. These guys are so cool because of these surfers and they'll be like, they'll go into these cults and be like, they were like not saying chill things about black people. Like they talk like surfers, but they're just, it's just so, they're so funny. But so I went and did a, he was talking to me about it. I go drive to La Jolla to do the comedy store. My friend Bobby was opening for me. He's like, oh, my friend Danny's here. He's like, so cool. He's got this YouTube channel where he infiltrates cults. And I was like, this is so weird. I'm meeting you right now because my fiance has been talking about you nonstop. Yeah. And so then we like connected. They came on the podcast and we just hit it off. They're just like, they're so cute. And po- it's so funny when you get like one inch away from comedy people. Yeah. People are just precious and sweet and nice and yeah. kind and loving and supportive. Yes. Um. So they just became our friends. And so then it's like, you know, three days later, it's New Year's. And and this guy, Danny Burke, is like, what are you guys doing for New Year's? I'm like, oh, my God, these are going to be like our New Year's plans. And we weren't really planning on anything. We're like, maybe just going to stay in because we're so tired from traveling from the holidays. Mm-hmm. And he goes, well, there's like Ben's girlfriend's having this party. I don't know if we're going to go or not. It was him and his girlfriend. And they send us the flyer. It's the sex party. It's just the flyer is just a girl with cum all over her face. <laughs> and we were like, well, I guess we 
gotta go to that. That reminds me of the banana bread that my mom made that had a cinnamon icing on top. How? Oh, got it. I was like, how? <laughs> Interesting. So we had similar New Year's Eve. <laughs> mm-hmm. Keep yeah. going. No, totally. You probably look just thing, like exactly. after you ate it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'm sure there was some acid reflux going on in the sex party too. <laughs> right. A little regurgitating. Yeah. Was Definitely like some gagging. Shot? Going on. So we go. It's like in, it was like in this warehouse downtown. You had to like step over like so many scary homeless people. Um, it was pitch black inside. No, no, no. To get in, oh. it was wild. And then we get there, and it was they had like the tea tree readings or the leaf readings. They had VR set up, and then they had a stage where there was like just different type of like. What sex was the acts. VR set up? It, I honestly thought it was going to be a lot of like jizz coming on our faces, but it was. They, I think they're just coming up, the the group of artists that threw this party are coming up with their own VR system or something. So it was more just like, I was on mushrooms too. So I was like, I, I was like, this is so weird. Cause it was like them rock climbing earlier that day. It was like all the people that had put the headset on me, yeah. but they were doing an activity that I was like watching. I was like, can I just go rock climbing with you? Did you and Todd have sex in public? No, nobody was really banging. Oh. And nobody we was weren't f-ing. We There was one sex room. It was a little bit disappointing in that. And I think it was actually the girl who was in the flyer was like giving a blowjob. It was fun. Like the guy, like as we like walked by, this guy was like, Looking us in the eye as this girl was blowing him. That was fun. That was okay. fun. But it was just huh? like for, well, when you go to a sex party, you want to see some sex. And yeah. we left kind of early. We left at one. But they were at the strike of midnight. They were, there was a woman on stage um, whipping a trans girl. And um, and then they tied her to a stake and tried to light her on fire, but it didn't work. It was very funny. It was so crazy. Tried to light her on fire? Yeah, they put some funny. like, <laughs> it was funny. It was, wasn't working. It was funny. They were like panicking. It was, you know, Andy, go to a sex party. Very gay of you. Oh. No, I want to go to more. I want to go to like the places where you have to like be a member or whatever. See, this is an example of something that before pregnancy, I was like, really really wanted to do and now i'm like i don't have an interest in that because that's actually I don't have a good this, example yeah no i i wouldn't i don't have the same interest that i think you might have had pre- like i'm not I going to, to do with pregnancy anything. i'm though. just curious yeah, like an avoir- you have a curious brain i would also just want to watch like just see what what's going on i have like a Who sex party scene person? in this movie i'm writing too so i kind of want to like get into which yeah. i know sounds fake but I really am going for no, research. No, I just, I'm like, I feel like, um, I'm, going I'm just for not research. as, I, I swear. I, I'm just not horny. Like, I'm like not, I I'm barely don't, horny. I'm barely I don't horny. care anymore. Like, I'm when people horny talk about children. sex, I'm like, grow up. That's how I feel. I'm aging out of, like, I have to do a special because I'm like aging out of my jokes. I'm like, oh, that's weird to talk you know, about I, my squirting. I just, <laughs> I just, this feel, out before I'm horrified. It's so weird, right? It like starts to happen where you're like, you're listening to your own shit talk about sex, and I'm like, I think this is natural, like, with comedy, especially. Like, if you don't look back at your jokes and go, like, why did I talk about that? Then you're not really getting better. Yeah. But I feel like when I hear my old jokes, I'm just like, oh, God, I suck. I'm still like, they're very well written on how cute was I, but I'm like, it's just not. And it's hard. Like, even just the changes of my life this past year, like, there's some material where I'm like, I can't really... I can't really sell this anymore, but I, it's, but it's funny, but it's like, I, yeah. it's not, I don't got, I don't have it. Mm. Well, isn't that how comedy works anyway? You just like get to some certain point where you're like, oh my God, I'm so beyond all these f-ing jokes. And they're <laughs> yeah. like, should I put this in a special? Like, oh God. Right. By the, by the time you're ready to shoot the special, you're just like, you hate Ugh. everything. Yeah. 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 I thought that you, you, the whole, the good thing about getting older is that you get like hornier and want to have sex all the time. Is that not? Too. I don't feel horny. I don't feel that way. I had like a really big boost from weed. Yeah. But then pregnancy just obviously took that all away. I'm so afraid of getting pregnant um, that I am just like so anxious around But sex. I thought you were, have you kind of worked through that a little or no? Um, it's still there. It's yeah. just, you know, and like obviously everyone I know that's pregnant or has kids is like, no, they're, you're never ready or whatever. And I'm like, yeah, but it's just like I'm very close to achieving a specific level that I'm trying to get to. So it's like it would just really f*** it up. But are, I, I mean, know it would be that's fine. How I it felt about it. I was yeah. like, it's just going to f*** everything up. Yeah. That's, that's like how I felt. And I feel like it did for me. Like I was like loving stand up and I was planning on doing a special and all this stuff. And then I'm just like that's that all went away in my first trimester. I was like, there's no way. So that's that's real. And I think having the frozen embryos gives me like. It's like I sleep at night. But my question I did was, that, yeah, same. I was like, let me freeze them just so that I can get this f- 
pressure off. I was so, I couldn't sleep. I yeah. Was like, Fuck it. I was, and it's so weird. I think the thing with motherhood, the, like the idea of it that's like so hard for me is like, I really wish that I just didn't want kids. Like, I wish I could just say, I absolutely don't want them, but I can't. And that's the thing like, and but I can't say like, I really want them either. You know? So it's like, that's what's stressful. I stand by. Yeah. Both options are terrifying. I know. Yeah. Both it's are, just, both, you don't win. You know when you see like the comics who like didn't have kids and they're like, talk about it all the time and you're like, it feels like they aren't okay with it. Like, and it's not my business and I don't know what people are thinking, so it doesn't matter. But I'm like, I do have like a fear of that, of like wanting to keep like justifying my decision. I always take people at their word. Like when they say that they're happy yeah. without mm -hmm. having kids, I believe them. And maybe they do want to talk about it because it's like there's an I absence I feel like of that's actually something that have. like society does to us where it's like we won't believe that women are happy without kids. And I think right. it's like internalized shit. Yeah. Um, and I think it's unfair that women feel that we have to prove that we're happy because we don't, when right. we don't have kids, yeah, I think that's, like that's fucked up too. Mm -hmm. But I am like, I, I, I do take their word for it. I yeah. just feel like I got to a point where I was like, I don't know if I want them. I don't know if I don't. I feel like I just want to make a choice. Mm -hmm. And having the embryos allowed me to be like, I have the choice. Right. Like I, yeah. I can make the choice whenever I want. And mm -hmm. then obviously I got pregnant like two months after freezing embryos, yeah. like with That's active cool, COVID. Yeah. But um, <laughs> I liked your guys' engagement photos. Those were cute. They oh, were thanks. Like thanks. COVID-y engagement yeah, yeah, yeah. photos. <laughs> yeah. They were totally, like we were like in a sublet Yeah. in LA. Did you know you were going to marry Andy when you first started dating him? I didn't know that I was going to marry him, but I knew that I wanted to get married. And so I told him, uh, I was like, hey, I want to get married. So if you don't, I just, um, I, I'm gonna, we should date other people if you don't Whoa. want, if you're not open to like getting married again. Yeah. Why did you, why did you want to get married? I've always want. I always wanted to be married. I just always like, I liked the idea of having a partner that like you could do everything with and yeah. that you spend your life with. And it's like, there's this kind of thing that you got to keep going. You got to, you got to keep working on yourselves together. And I, it was just, to me, it was really a cool idea. I know yeah. people are like, it's it doesn't seem cool to get married. No, I always I, thought it was I cool. I see that now. Now I'm very grateful for that. But I wasn't, I don't know that I never wanted to get married. I never imagined myself in a wedding dress. Me either. Or I, I didn't either, but I wanted to be married. Yeah, but ne but with Todd, I was, he was like the first guy. Cause there were like boyfriends I always had. I was like, oh, like I can't marry. Like I got married on ecstasy in Santa Fe to a boyfriend I had who was cheating on me all the time. <laughs> and it was like a joke, like kind of like a joke thing. Like we didn't sign anything. But I remember being like in my head, like, this, I hope this isn't yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> like legally binding in any way. This right, is not right. a funny joke if this actually. And then other boyfriends, like I did, um, DMT with one of my ex-boyfriends and we had such a volatile like crazy relationship and I came out of the DMT trip being like it feels like like the DMT was telling me like I need to be a mom and he was like I knew you wanted that because I was like not with you oh my yeah. god no, no 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 not with you yeah I want the kids to survive right yeah but it was like I, it was like I was with these people it was like very unhealthy like there was never like an option to get married or have kids because the relationships were so healthy because I was so unhealthy yeah I wasn't seeking out a thing that could work but Todd is like so solid and it was like oh I love doing everything with you it's like so fun to be with you all the time yeah do any of you feel pressure from your family to like have the kids or get married like just Todd's for them? side but not my side doesn't care but Todd's side like Todd's parents are in their mid 50s because Todd's young as hell but so and they're like but they have like Todd's dad's a roofer and then his mom is a is a bank teller or a bank a banker so they live kind of like their jobs are like difficult they're like you know going to the bank every day is like tedious and then being a someone that does manual labor they feel like so old and my parents are in their 70s and 80s and they feel so young you know mm -hmm. so it's like so my parents don't they're like and they're they have grandkids and so everyone has grandkids of my in-laws and my parents but my father-in-law will be like you gotta have kids now Annie like 
you know, life's over. You know, I'm like, what are you talking about? Yeah, yeah. I'm like, I don't feel that way at all. Right. But there's like that. But I always tell Todd's mom she can be the surrogate if she wants. Do you want to have them and raise them and I'll take them when they're 18? Yeah. Like, that's fine. (laughs) I'm busy, bitch. You all all want my, do you want my generational wealth that I'm working on here? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Or not? (laughs) Yeah. You at least, like, I know you didn't get to use your embryos, but now you have them. So if you ever, like, throw a second one in a surrogate... Yeah, I'm like I, I have six, I have six four. girls. I'm like um, I have you four have boys. six girls. I have four boys. Four boys. Spotsies. What? Wait, you guys all have? That's so crazy. You both have all the same. Andy gender. is yeah. such a girl dad, though. Yeah, he is He's such a girl dad. Yeah, I He'd be hate so that cute with content the though. Every time I see girl dad content, I'm like, ugh, God. I, I love. I saw this. It always that- just looks like get dads trying to get laid for having <laughs> just for being yeah. a dad Look to a woman. Look how great I am. Yeah, and I'm like. Off. I like the thing that I'm like. I had a girl dad. I just called him dad. Like it's <laughs> f-ing f-ing off. Um, I like the the thing about people touching your baby mm-hmm. that Andy posted. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. Because we funny. went to Thanksgiving and it was like one of my dad's friends who was like hammered walked up and was like, "Give me the baby," and I hadn't prepared myself. I just thought nobody did that. I just yeah. thought everybody knew not to do that. So I handed her the baby and then I was just following her around like a free, like I was just like following her around. And finally, I just took her. I just like grabbed her out of the woman's. She was like, what are you doing? And I was like, nope, she's too new. I was like, give her to it's me. It's like fear like, and loathing in Las Vegas. It was like, give me the baby. He's like tripping on stuff. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. No, it's, and there's, it's funny too, because it's like people will try to, it's, you know, we're with comics. So like comics, we take swings and we'll try to make jokes and whatever. And I remember like we had a comic over and somebody was like, I think Andy was like, oh, I wouldn't let, uh, I didn't let so-and-so in the room while I was changing her diaper. And the the guy was like, I tried, I tried to watch. And I almost f- flew across the room. I was like, I don't- it wasn't a comic or it was a comic? It was a comic. Yeah. But I was like, you don't f***ing make fun yeah. of- That's my kid. That's not your bit. Yeah. You know what I mean? I was like, this isn't- We're not in this a fucking- is This yeah. isn't a fucking podcast. Like, I was like, that's my fucking kid. And I, to this day, like, if anybody tries to make a joke about my kid, I have to physically, physically hold myself back from hitting them. <laughs> like, I, I- It's very difficult. Whoa. Yeah. I'm like, it's I really- I make fun of your kid. It's crazy. I wonder. I won't. Okay, thanks. Don't do it. No, I'm not gonna. Yeah, don't do it. I've not even made fun of you. Uh, You can make fun of me as a mom. You can make fun of Andy as a dad. But you cannot. I've been wanting to make fun of her so bad, and then I can't. It's like not in me anymore. Thank you. (laughs) You're in a different state. She's a different thing. Yeah, it's like I'm becoming a different. It's weird. It's exciting to see though. I the pregnancy is is a boot camp that is changing me. You seem so much better though. I don't feel better. (laughs) I feel a lot worse. But maybe you've had to surrender to the feeling. I've had to surrender to a lot, and it is. I just feel like it is breaking down every fiber of my being and rebuilding me. Every fiber. Fibroid of her being. And to mm-hmm. being something different and new. I've never done something for someone else. I've never made this kind of a huge sacrifice. And I can't, I'm on, you're on, once you're on the ride, you can't get off. No, it's crazy. So it's just, I'm forced to be in this and, and I'm letting it change me. I'm obviously kicking and screaming on my way, but like it's happening. Yeah. And I'm, I don't know. I'm also, I think this is just pregnancy hormones and not like changes but I'm very sensitive no that's real that's I'm, a real change that'll happen that'll last yeah like I'm so sensitive in ways that I never have been sensitive well I'm glad I had the instinct to not make fun of <laughs> well not I don't, <laughs> I don't think that, that shit. but oh. it's one thing you know it's how to read a room oh, it's boy. more like I know how to read a delivery room it's yeah. more just like I'm I feel this like sensitivity of a connection with my family and a closeness oh, and so like sweet. You have such a cute family. I love your parents so much. I just, I don't know. Or like when I was, this weekend I did a gig in San Jose. And I know that I've talked about this with you last summer. Like I love going on the road alone. I love it. It's so fun. And then I was pregnant on the road alone. And I, it's all different now. You texted me about this. I was, it was dark. (laughs) I almost called you and Kalila. It was so dark. I was, I just felt alone and isolated and sad and that's not how I've ever been before. So you're just like, what the f***? There could have been a worst case scenario. You could have been with some of your past openers. (laughs) 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 Which couldn't be a fate worse than hell. I mean, there's (laughs) nothing worse. I've always been very shocked at your choices. Oh, 
<laughs> oh, okay, we're taking That's a swing. Oh, wow. We want to oh have some God. drama. <laughs> but you feel, I feel like you have the road figured out perfectly because you'll have Andy and baby. Mm-hmm. And you get to do your job. Well, have Are you going to try yet. to drive or fly? Um, I enjoy flying. Yeah. Yeah. It's interesting, like the... Like, I'm very picky about the routing now because I'm like, I'm traveling with a baby. So I want to make sure that the routing makes sense. Yeah. Whereas before I'd be like, yeah, take me from here to here. No, and I none want of it- the routing to make sense. Do you have Faradini? Yeah. Because sometimes I'm like, what is, is this like a joke? Are you f-ing with me? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'll be like, what is like, are you want me to die of, of jet lag? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'm like, every day I'm like, wait, I'm back there. Wait, what's happening? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'm doing like the Star of David. I'm like really getting into my Judaism. I'm like, what is f-ing right. going on? No, I didn't, I just didn't care before, but now I'm kind of like, because I was just like, I'm in hell anyway. Like, But the routing too has to be like a year in advance. You have to figure that out too. It's yes. like so much planning and preparing. Yeah. So I'm like, and I don't think like that. Like I'm not a planner. So I have to show, I like show Andy the routing because he's so good at like planning shit yeah. and like knowing how it's going to play out that he'll be like, oh, this doesn't make sense. Beyond that, I feel like it's pretty much the same. Because I feel like Natasha did it so cute too with Moshe, like where they just had like a RV. Just like going together and bringing yeah. the baby seems yeah. great. I'm just like, Todd, do you want a spot? <laughs> <laughs> because he was going on the road with me and I did. I had to stop like even requesting that from him because it's like he doesn't like traveling and he doesn't get the glory of the experience of performing for people. So it's like. He should come up with, uh, on stage at the end with you. We, Dave and I did that a couple tour dates last year and it was like. It was magnificent. Yeah, it is cute. Like, he should just come up the last 10 minutes. Uh, he just, just try it. And yeah. Please. He's really funny. He has so shoot funny. the shit what on What was stage? he saying yesterday? He just said show where I'm like, this is so fucking funny. Yeah, Todd doing- is funny. Oh, it was crazy what he was doing. Actually, I can't repeat it, but it was so funny. Do you guys ever go on stage together? Andy and I? Yeah. Oh, you do? Yeah. Oh. So, like, Andy will go up first, then I'll go up, and then, or, you know, depending on who's headlining. But, like, w- and then at the end... We both come up and we just we just shoot the shit. Isn't that so fun? It's really fun. It ends up being like really funny. Yeah. Yeah. And magical. I think you should do it. I always like that's why I was like going before or after you. Because I do it with my opener together on stage. I feel like yeah, I did that too. Doing it with my openers is fun. Yeah. Yeah. Because I never have had I always I'm lucky enough that like my friends will open for me. If I'm like, I know that this is, you're above this, but can we do this? Because yeah. I just want to have a good time. No, that's fun. I, I will open yeah. for people. That's really yeah. fun. Mm-hmm. I'll open for my friends too. I like it. Oh my it. God. Nate Bergazzi was at the comedy store last night. And it was like so fun to hang out with him because I just haven't seen him in so long. And I was like, I wish I had a clean 20 and could go on the road with you. It's like, he's so Why clean. do you want a clean 20? Because I could, because then I could go on the road with him. He's so clean. He's like yeah. squeaky clean. So yeah. my, I would be, his audience would be horrified by me. <laughs> but I'm like, oh, it'll be so fun. Oh. I've never, I've never in my life wanted to write a clean joke. I don't like doing occur. them. I don't, yeah. It I mean, happen. sometimes they land clean, but it's not. Yeah, I'm, I'm like, I'm I guess like that's kind of clean, but theme wise, it doesn't, it's not clean. Right. You know what I mean? It's, it's like about death or disease or yeah. something. Dark, dark. Yeah. yeah, I don't have a lot of th- thoughts that aren't. Yeah. Nasty. Anytime <laughs> my anytime my agents have asked me for like a late night set, I'm like, what are you talking about? No, there I, needs to be late night sets that are dirty. It's there needs late. to be a late night show where we can go and just do it all. Now, okay. I get it now. I get it now with like the SNL thing. I'm like, okay, I get it. I get why it doesn't work because there's people, I mean, first of all, advertisers, but like oh, yeah. there's also like people in the Midwest that are watching that are like, it's, it bums them out. Like, it yeah. genuinely bums them out. Uh, Rosebud, I think no, you no, have no. an out for your... Yeah. Um, you look well, great. Rosebud. Your skin looks really good. Thank you. Thank you so much. Really Thank you good. for... You guys look great. Squeezing us in on I've your been... L.A. press trip. Are you kidding me? Press and squeeze. You can't stop press thinking about this squeeze. delivery. Press and squeeze. <laughs> <laughs> Kick and fight. Um, thank you so much. Yes, and so much. Thanks for having I'm me. I'm so sad we're out of time. I feel like we could talk forever. Please come I back. I could talk for another three hours. Yeah, I, I truly, I love so you fun. guys. I, also, is... next time, I really want you to bring the snake. I'll bring the snake. I also <laughs> want to hang out at Tim's house with you. Yeah. 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 Um, but people can watch your set on Netflix Verified, which it's yes. so funny. And they can follow you on social media. And then this tour that's coming in May, mm-hmm. which will have you and your husband and your baby. Yeah. Hopefully she doesn't spend a second on stage. But I don't know which is worse. Like, I don't know if it's worse to take your baby on stage or to let a waiter watch them. <laughs> 
So. Yeah, I just feel like it's I think whatever. keeping them in the back would be, I don't know, who knows? Well, whatever happens will happen yeah, and be cares? fine and perfect. Yeah. yeah, but thank you so much. Thanks and thank coming. you to our listeners. Love you guys. And I we'll see so you fun. guys next week with a brand new episode.